It's the Q. Here is your host, Jeff Crick. Hi, Jeff Rick here with theCUBE. We are on the ground in the heart of Silicon Valley at the brand newly opened Ford Innovation and Research Center, uh, right, in, right in the middle of everything, uh, just a few blocks away from HP, another great uh, technology company. And I'm joined here by my next guest, Ken Washington, the VP of Research and Advanced Engineering. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, it's great to be here with you. So, uh, a lot of excitement, ton of press, everybody's here. You guys had some opening remarks, and the one that kind of jumped out uh, at me was kind of thinking about different types of mobility. So, you know, we're here, people are riding Ubers, they're riding alternative cars, zip cars. You know, not a lot of the young people that live in downtown San Francisco are necessarily racing out and buying that first car. You guys are thinking about that. Tell us a little bit about the, your perspective of that trend from, a Ford, uh, from Ford and a car manufacturing company. Well, well first of all, we, we've certainly noticed the trend. And, and so we, we wanted to be part of that, and but we didn't quite know what would work for a, an auto a OEM like Ford. And so we started some experiments, and we call them that intentionally because some of these experiments are going to lead to uh, business outcomes that will work for us, and some might not. And so uh, over a year ago, we established what we called a blueprint for mobility that laid out a number of experiments that we announced uh, a little over a week ago at the Consumer Electronics Show. And in those experiments, we're exploring alternative usership models, alternative ways to, um, uh, to actually uh, get around a city using public transportation or private transportation, and, and new ownership models for, for how you would actually either purchase a car and or own a car. And then last but not least is new ways of interacting with your social network as you seek to be mobile. And it's all about choice. Mm -hmm. Enabling choice regarding if I want to move from point A to point B, what options do I have? Uh, and I might not have the option of owning a vehicle and then parking it where I need to go. So um, our experiments are looking into offering options for how you would make that choice in a way that would fit your lifestyle. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because it's really, you know, it's transportation as a service sometimes, not necessarily just I want to get a car, which is which is kind of like cloud, but at the end of the day, there's got to be a data center back behind the cloud. So even if you want to get transportation, at the end of the day, there's got to be some wheels, right, that are taking you places. Right, right. and we're starting by putting the customer in the center, center and, and asking the customers, well, what would work for you? And so one of the things we heard when we asked, well, what would work for you is, uh, give me the option of sharing a vehicle with another person who wants to own a vehicle. One of the things we learned by talking to customers is that in, a, in this new world where you, people live in mega cities and when you see the, the middle class uh, growing at a, at a really significant rate, more people are in a position where they want to own a car, but sometimes they're not in a position to actually own a car. And so they wanted to have the option of owning a car in a partnership with two or three other people. Right. So we're doing a, a shared ownership experiment. Right. That's just one example of the kind of choices we're offering right. in our mobility experiments. Talk about two like alternative, well, uh, let me back up a step. So one of the things about being in Silicon Valley is there's a lot of other tech companies here you can partner, right? You're right across the street from Tesla, the newest US automaker. You guys are one of the oldest US automakers. Google's down the street with cars driving all around Mountain View that you see all the time. But you talked about another interesting um, partnership that you guys are doing with a gaming company. Again, kind of a thinking outside the box, using kind of the technology that's available to change the game a little bit. I wonder if you can dive into that a little bit for us. Sure, sure. So one of the great things about being in Silicon Valley and one of the reasons we chose to create a presence here is uh, the way you innovate is, is um, we're learning how to innovate in a Silicon Valley way. And part of innovating that way is trying things out that, that can grow up and turn into new new opportunities right and so we looked at tr we're trying to find a way to accelerate our, our our learning and algorithms for autonomous vehicles and we we turned to the gaming industry and because what if you could do learning and and autonomous driving experiments in a virtual world and to explore that idea that uh, we could have on one hand built a virtual environment that would be suited for automated driving but that would take much more time than just leveraging an existing gaming engine that has the ability to make very realistic s scenes. And uh, so we just tried it out. You know, right, we got right. an open source gaming engine right. and just tried it. Right. And it turns out it worked. 
And when it worked, then we went and, and actually purchased a, a more uh, full-featured gaming engine. And uh, that more full-featured engine gave us the ability to actually advance our algorithms. We're still in the fairly early phases, but we're pretty excited about that, not only because of that particular example, but about the way that we're innovating yeah. in a Silicon Valley way. Yeah, it's a very different way, and ar arguably easier way, because in software you can A-B test and roll things out and make iterative changes. If you make a multi-billion dollar investment to roll out a new car model with factories and parts and stuff, that's a those are big gambles. So out here, it seems to be smaller chunks a lot more faster. And I'm glad that you uh, you guys are adopting that. That's great. Last thing I want to talk about is Internet of Things, connected devices, and not just not just the simple things that I can plug my Bluetooth in, but really what types of new opportunities does the fact that everything's going to be connected on the cloud with big data capabilities, inexpensive storage, um, inexpensive compute, going to impact the way you guys deliver your products, go to market, interact with your customers? It's going to really change what, what's possible. And, and we're excited about it because the Internet of Things, I mean, the vehicle is one of the most advanced things that can be on the internet and we recognize that a and we're also seeing the evolution of smart uh, technology in homes and so we had one idea of what if you could put what if you could put those together right. and and you mentioned and you're working with nest which yeah which was yeah a surprise. so yeah we're doing some some research to explore what would it what would it be like if we could enable a vehicle to talk to your uh, smart devices in your home and it turns out that's quite possible. And so we're doing some research in that area. That's an example of what the Internet of Things will enable as you create these capabilities in the vehicle by connecting the vehicle onto the Internet and then analyzing the data in smart ways so that you're changing the experience of the, of the driver, not just in the vehicle, but you're changing their, their lifestyle, if you will. You're enabling them to have the kind of lifestyle that they truly want. Right. So we're, we're looking at it from lots of angles. Right, and of course all the data you guys are getting in terms of how these, these products are actually used, you know, it's gotta be so nice to actually be connected to those things at some point in time where you know how people drive, you know what habits are, you know the difference of San Francisco driver than an LA driver, than a New York driver, than a Detroit driver, or somebody out in the middle of, uh, of the Plain States. That's gotta be tremendously valuable information. The possibilities are, are very significant, but it's really important to recognize that the data is not ours. It's the, the customer's data. And so it starts with an acknowledgement of that. And so if the customer gives us the permission right. through an opt-in process, then we will have access to right, that. Right. And uh, our commitment is to use that access in a valuable way, pair it up with the other information we have access to, add it with the ability to analyze that in a thoughtful way to give a value back to that customer. Right. That's what we're calling our big data analytics element of our forward smart mobility plan. We think it's going to unlock lots of new experiences, and we're excited about yeah. that. You just have to get Flo from Progressive to offer out the little uh, little GPS, UPS thing. She's, she's, she's pushing those <laughs> things all the time. Well, Ken, thanks for stopping by. It's a really exciting. A um, lot of opportunities here for Ford to continue to move, continue to innovate. I know the focus was a big step forward re for you guys and a big success. So thanks for stopping by. It's my pleasure. Thank you. All right. So I'm Jeff Frick here. We're on the ground at the Ford Innovation and Research Center, downtown Palo Alto.